Chris, we're talking about vibrations. Vibrations. Yeah. Boy, I can't think of anything fun to do with vibrations. Can you can't? You? Are you kidding me? You have some ideas? Oh my God, we have so many things to show them. Well, let's get right to it. So what do we got going here, Chris? Well, we have four metronomes. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, they're not doing much, Diane. No, not doing much at all. However, we can change that. Okay, let's set them into motion. Okay, they're all like out of whack. They're all out of step, aren't they? We say they're out of phase. Oh. But you know what? what? I, I have a feeling if we wait just a little while. What's the big deal here, Chris? Hang on. Oh, three of them are in together. Three of them are in step, aren't they? Yeah. But, uh, okay, now those three are in step. What about this guy? I know. Oh, 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 oh. they're right. all in step. They're all in step. <laughs> You'll notice that the metronome has a definite frequency. That is the rate at which it swings back and forth. However, I can vary that by moving the metronome. If I have a second metronome on the same platform, which you'll notice moves, this metronome can affect the motion of this one through the coupling due to the platform. And very quickly, you'll see the two move in phase. If the platform were stationary, that would not happen. Hey Chris, I'm in my car right now. And if you ever notice that there's a frequency associated with your um, wiper blades, you can hear it. It's almost like the beat of music, isn't it? And so music also has a frequency. And I'm not talking about the frequency of high frequency, low frequency. I'm talking about the beat of the music. I mean, isn't that what the metronome really is doing, is keeping the beat of the music? I've noticed that you can see things go in and out of phase if you play music in your car while your wipers are going. Let's take a look. All right, so let's give this a try. What we're going to do is we're going to have the windshield wipers going. I'm going to turn on some music, then I'm going to try to keep the beat of the music with my arm. And we'll watch for the two different frequencies to be in phase and out of phase. Now this whole phenomenon of things going in and out of phase is called beats. And you may experience it a lot in your life. Like the first time I really thought about it was sitting there on a rainy day listening to music in my car. But you can hear it a lot of times if you have two frequencies that are slightly different or experience it in other ways in your life. So let's see if we can see these beats right now. like the playground when you're on a swing or whatever, everything has a natural frequency. So like this, this ball, if I put it in motion, it'll naturally start oscillating and that would be called its natural frequency, okay? Now notice this ball, different length on this pendulum here with this ball. And so notice that's a much different natural frequency, right? And then this long guy here, I mean, he's got quite, a different natural frequency. I mean, if you look at these two together, quite a different natural frequency. Maybe, maybe you've noticed this out on the playground sometime as you were on the So Diane, we have four pendulums and they're all of different length. Chris. What? I think they can see that definitely these three are of different lengths, but these two, 
I don't know. They look pretty similar to me. Uh, you're right. They are similar. So they will have the <laughs> same natural frequency? They should, yeah. I wonder what that means in terms of all four pendulums. In other words, if we set this guy in motion, the others really don't respond. Yeah, no, nothing going on. And this one, the short one, which has a high frequency, has some effect on the other two tennis balls, but mm -hmm. not all that much. No, not that much at all. Notice the string, they're holding them all together. That's important because the string couples or connects the four pendulum's motions. Kind of like the metronomes. Very similar. Oh, okay, great. You, you know what we haven't done yet? It's set one of these in motion. Oh, yeah, big deal. Well, it is a big deal because oh, wow. its motion really doesn't affect the other two pendulums, yeah. but it sets this one in motion. Wow. When two objects have the same natural frequency, we say that a condition of a resonance exists. And in, when resonance exists, energy can be transferred very efficiently from one pendulum to the other. Well, that one stopped. It is, but wait, now it's set in motion again. Do you see that? Oh, wow, so this, this guy's... Eventually will stop, there it goes. And this one is moving with a very large swing. Wow and back and forth it'll go because of the resonance condition. Even things like this fan have a natural frequency. And even a string has a natural frequency. If you remember, the pendulum, the length of the string made a difference as to the natural frequency of those pendulums. Now, let's take a look at what happens when we get the natural frequency of this fan to match or be a multiple of the natural frequency of the string. Oh, there it is. There it is. We get something called a standing wave. This wave is called a standing wave because it doesn't appear to propagate. It doesn't appear to move down the string. It just looks like it's stationary with the um, middle part just bouncing back and forth. What do we call that middle part, Chris? An anti-node. And the parts that don't move at all? Like where my fingers are located? Yes. A node. A node. Could you maybe try and get two anti-nodes? Well, let's see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, almost. Uh, there we go, there we go. Whoa. Aha! Do Whoa. you see it? So we have a node here. And we have an anti-node here and an anti-node here, a node down here, and node up where Chris's fingers are. This is called a standing wave. Just like strings, metal plates have natural frequencies at which they vibrate. To show that, I'm going to place some sand on the plate. And now I'm going to try to excite the plate at its natural frequency. Chris, are we looking for standing waves here? You know what? These are two-dimensional standing waves. Just like with a string, there's a vibration that goes in this direction, ah, and also in this direction. And what happens is those vibrations interfere, producing a pattern of nodes and antinodes, just like the string. How will we know where the nodes are? Hmm. The nodes should be located where the plate is not moving. Ah, and just the, like the string. Just like the string. Let's hmm. give it a whirl. Okay. Now I'm going to adjust the frequency. To oh, you can see it moving. We're going to try to match the natural frequency of the plate. Oh, oh, oh. Really close, Diane. Really close. Now, oh, this is beautiful. Notice where the sand is dancing up and down. Those are the antinodes.
Right. And what happens, <laughs> this is terrific, what happens is the particles will move until they land on a node. Right, because it doesn't get bounced around there. It, it no longer bounces around at those points. And look at this pattern. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. Look at that. And it also got louder. Did you notice that when Did it was it really? resonating? Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. When we hit the resonant frequency, the plate vibrated more and the sound got louder. That's beautiful, Chris. Can we try to find one more? Sure, go for it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, let's just let it go. Diane, look at that. That's gorgeous. Look at those nodes. Nice nodes. Chris. Nice nodes. Here, here, here. Yep. What a gorgeous pattern. Diane, we have a rather unusual device right here. This is called an acoustic levitator. And it consists of two ultrasonic transducers or speakers, one here and one here. The purpose of these speakers is to set up an acoustic standing wave. And just as you've seen, standing waves are characterized by nodes and antinodes. Here, you can't see them, but we have nodes and antinodes between the two transducers. Now, we're going to try something. I have a very small piece of styrofoam on the end of this little spatula. The object is to get it suspended between two antinodes. Oh, wow. There it is. There it is. So that little piece of styrofoam now identifies a node. Right, right. Let's see if we can get two. No. What do you mean, no? Uh, I don't know. Keep the faith. Node. Come node. on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, yes. Yes. Whoa. Nice job. Wow. I know, I know. All right, so now it gets tricky. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna to try to suspend one more. Just one. Just one piece of styrofoam, mm -hmm. and we may not be able to do it. Oh! Oh, yes! <laughs> nice. So each of those pieces of styrofoam is located at a node. That is correct. And then in between there, there'd be anti-nodes, and that's why it couldn't stay there because there was too much action. That is absolutely correct. Now, okay, come now, on. Come on, we could may you have, do one more? Wait, wait, wait. We may have to cut the video right now, <laughs> now that we have success. But why? Why? Let's go for four. Go, come on. Oh, there we go. Woohoo! Now, now,